Bibles tonight and turn with me. Let's start over there in 2i John. Uh, Dr. Tom Malone, one of my heroes, he said when he first got saved, he was over saved in the mountains of, of, of uh, North Alabama. And he said the, the preacher there would come through the circuit and he called it one eye John, two eye John, and three eye John. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's pretty accurate. Somebody say amen. Yeah, yeah. Kind of said, sound like Trump. He didn't quite know what that was when he started talking about the Bible yeah. and uh, revealed his ignorance about that one Corinthians, you know. Yeah. But uh, I, I still voted for him. Yeah. And I'll vote for him again. Yeah. And if that bothers you, you can just lump it, hump it, just lay down on the floor. Yeah. I'll vote for him again. Yeah. And, uh, and praise God. Well, uh, I've enjoyed the song service. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we went over there to the barbecue place. And um, I ate enough Brunswick stew to float a battleship. Praise God. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, I'm, if I get thirsty during this message, somebody bring me a gallon of tea. Help me. Get with it. Second John, is that what I said? Look at it over here in verse 1. Is everybody listening? Say I. Now I know when the ball game comes on about 9, and some of y'all can't even think about the things of God. Honestly, we're so athletically and, and so pleasure crazed. Uh, that preacher I was telling you about, uh, and uh, he said, Billy Mitchell said, if you rolled a basketball into hell, 20 Baptists to jump in there after it to get it. <laughs> and it's about the God's truth. Yeah, yeah, right. We can't even hardly have church for worrying about a game. Right. And, uh, but I have predetermined, it's predestined tonight that I'm not going coon hunting. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's supposed to be flat. Everywhere I came, come over, it's flat. Yeah. Everywhere I saw was flat. I just see as far as see way through yonder. And we turned the dog loose last night, and I thought I was in the mountains of western North Carolina. <laughs> you couldn't even see the bottom down in there, and then treat on the other side, man. And uh, I'm hurting all over more than anywhere else, amen. My <laughs> back belly and both sides is hurting right now. <laughs> Let's look at the text. Are y'all okay? Yeah. I feel like I've already acclimated to y'all pretty well. I, I hadn't had too much resistance while I'm preaching. I, I preached a lot of different places in my life, and this is a place I feel comfortable. I, I pastored down in Alabama my first few years of pastorate in Bullock County. is 90% black. If you were white, you were a minority there. And uh, Thank you, brother. And, and I had been invited to preach at an all-black meeting, pastor's meeting, and our church had experienced some growth in the brethren there. And I'd never been to an all-black service before. Mm -hmm. And they worship a little different than we do. And I, I got there. And, uh, and I mean, just to get it started, I mean, it was unusual to me. And uh, the preacher got up. He said, well, now, I come to Ted this morning, yeah. And, man, I was listening up. He said, Brother Tony's with us this morning. Yeah, and them ladies said, uh-huh. <laughs> and that organ said, zoo, zoo. <laughs> and they had an amen corner over there like this bench, but they had about three of them. And then brother said, hey, 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 man. And now I'm nervous by now. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a white boy. So I'm Anglo-Saxon, Scotch-Irish hillbilly to the bone. And, uh, man, I was getting nervous. By then, I looked like a Q-tip dipped in iodine. I mean, my face was turning red. <laughs> that priest said, Brother Tony's with us this morning, yeah. Or he said, zoo, zoo. He said, come lay on us what God has laid on you. And I thought, now what God has laid on me, I had forgotten a while ago. <laughs> and, man, they were anxious for preaching. And, uh. I got behind the pulpit. I looked that crowd over. I said, well, now, I can't do like the brothers do, but I'll do the best I can. One of them mothers sitting on the second bench with a big old hat on said, yeah. <laughs> and so I'll do the best I can. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes things just don't turn out right. Yeah. One of those black churches down in South Alabama were going to update their services. And they were in the country, way out in the country. And, uh, 
And so the deacons got together and talked to the pastor and said, we're going to send you to town and want you to observe how they do church in town and come back and bring something. We want to update the way we do things around here. And so one Sunday they set it up and the preacher went down. He couldn't read very well. He just knew it was a church. when it's a Catholic church. And father dressed like mother. I mean, you know. <laughs> and everything impressed him. Everything was just, you know, everything. The whole, the whole rituals of their service just impressed him. But I mean, what impressed most of all is at the end of the service, altar call time, what we Baptists call, they came these boys down the aisle with these little pots in their hand, brass pots with smoke. It was incense pots. And they placed them up there around the altar. And that really impressed that preacher. And he went to the father and he said, say, father. Father said, yes, sir. He said, what be them pots down there? And he said, well, those pots are incense pots. And said, it, it, it gives them, you know, uh, just a special attention to this portion of the service. And he says, show does. So when he got back home, he called the deacons and he, they said, what did you find out? He said, we need some incense pots around here. And they said, well, we can't afford them things. And so they got some old Maxwell House coffee cans. <laughs> and they painted them gold and got some of that Spanish moss off them trees down there around the coast. And, and they, about the time, you know, to bring them down, the deacon said, now, preacher, how are we going to want to bring him things down now? And the preacher said, I'll tell you when. And so he preached. He wanted to hurry up and get through with that message because he wanted to see them incense pots. And finally, in said time, time for invitation came. He said, bring me the incense pots. And nothing happened. And he's looking at the, where the deacons are supposed to come down. And he said, bring me the incense pots. And still nothing happened. And finally, there came two deacons walking down that had their hands cupped. There was nothing in them. Just empty hands. And he looked down at Deacon Joe. He said, where be the incense pot? Old Job looked up. He said, we floated out the window when the bottoms got hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, some things just don't work out right. <laughs> one, one old black preacher, good preacher, kept preaching. He'd say the same thing. Get hung up say, he'd say, Open them doors and open them wide. Let them sinners come inside. Then he'd preach a while. He gets feeling pretty good. And he'd say, I open them doors and open them wide. Let them sinners come inside. Then he'd preach a little while. And there's some fellas laying brick across the road. And they're getting irritated every five minutes. Open them doors, open them wide. One of them said, next time he says, I'm throwing a brick at him. He got to feeling good. He said, hold them doors. And open brute came, pow, just busted him right across his head. Busted his hide blood running down his cheek. He said, close them doors and close them quick. He said, some old sinner done chunked the bread. <laughs> yeah, laugh a little while. Because we're coming for your juggler right now in just a minute. Let's stand together, if you will, with you. We don't have to stand to reverence God's word, or we couldn't listen to preaching riding down the road. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. You yeah. th can I mind the Lord? I was, in a, I was in a preach. I was in a meeting in Gainesville, Georgia. Yeah. And I'm the guest evangelist. And I announced the text and started reading it, and four or five jumped up on me. And what they, what they were trying, they distracted from the reading of God. What they were trying to do was catch the preacher doing something wrong because they were Pharisees. Yeah. Because their pastor didn't tell them to stand up. Mm -hmm. And I didn't ask them to stand up. Now, I like standing up. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. But what they wanted to do was they, you know, they wanted to, well, your disciples didn't wash their hands before they ate that corn over there. Yeah. What about them stealing the corn? Yeah. Yeah. They stole the corn. Somebody help me. Yeah. And these boys worried about them washing their hands. Is everybody okay? Yeah. That's how warped these Pharisees are. That's right. And I announced the text. They tried to catch me. They said, well, catch me doing something wrong. And they, and they interrupted me because they, they stepped up and everybody didn't know what to do, you know. Yeah, right, right. And so I said, oh, I see you like to stand <laughs> for the reading. I said, well, turn to Psalms 119. <laughs> Longest chapter. Let's see how bad you want to stand. Somebody say amen. Yeah, right. Pharisees like titles. Sure. You get around some of these circles. Ahead, you, I can't stand it. Are you, are you full-time or bivocational? If a preacher's too sorry to work, you ought not have him. That's right. 
if a church is too sorry to pay them, shame on the church. That mentality, they look down on somebody. Are you bivocational? I'm, I'm quadruple vocational. And I ain't going to tell you everything I do because some of y'all write me off. But y'all used to raise a lot of it around here too. Somebody says, is everybody okay? Everybody okay? We're living in a, in a time, these Pharisees, they, they, they want to know who your favorite preacher is. And, it, and if you don't like the doctor they like, it's in our, it's around here. It's pretty thick in this crowd. If you don't say the name of the preacher they like, automatically there's already a stigma on you. That's wrong. There's Phariseeism. And it didn't say beware of the loaf of the Pharisees. It said beware of the leaven of them. If you wait till the loaf gets in. Now I understand I'm a separatist and I preach against things. And if that bothers you, you have to get over it. I, I believe a lady ought to look like a lady and a man ought to look like a man. And, and I'm going to preach that if it harlips the Pope till I die. I come in here and preach, I'm going to leave that here. But Pharisees are more concerned about what's on the outside. They're worried about what you got on more. Now, and, I, and I, I'll be, hey, somebody said, well, man looks on that with appearance. God looks on the heart. That's why we want to dress right because, man, we're not trying to win God. We're not trying to win God. We're trying to win the world. That's good preaching, Brother Tom. Amen. But them Pharisees, so I'm glad you're standing. But you don't have to stand to reverence God's word. Or we could, we'd be hypocrites listening to preaching riding down the road. Amen. But here's, here's the text. Now, are y'all looking at it? Everybody got the Bible? Notice the words, the elder unto the, what's the next two words? Okay, and her children. Look at the elect lady and her children. Look at verse 5. Now I beseech thee, what's the next word? Lady. lady. Look at verse 13. The children of thy, what? Lady. Greet thee. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, I need your touch tonight. And I stand tonight where my mind could fail me so easily and, and has and I'm sure will at times. And so I pray you would in a supernatural way uh, put, a, put a caulk under the wheel of my mind, keep it from slipping. I pray you'd give me clarity of thought. And I do ask for the convicting power of the Holy Ghost to do the work man's lips cannot do, man's body language cannot do, volume cannot do. Lord, I pray that you'd work in hearts. I pray you'd take, you said the spirit and the bride say come. And so tonight if there's lost here, I pray they'd hear the message of the gospel. It's already been sung, it's been testified to. Two brethren have testified about their salvation. And Lord, we thank you for it. And we all want to praise you for that. But there may be somebody here lost tonight. And you know the soul of man. And I pray God tonight you'd draw that sinner and let them see themselves headed for hell and let tonight be the last night they're lost. But then for the church on this Wednesday night meeting, I pray that you'd strengthen the church. Thank God we're in this age of grace. I'm glad I'm not one of the Old Testament saints. I'm glad I'm not going to be a tribulation saint. But Lord, I thank you that I got in born in, in this, 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 this blessed age. And Lord, help us to be grateful for the church. For we ask it now in Christ's name and may long live old time religion till you come. Amen. And you can be seated. In this text, the church is identified as a lady. Now, mind you, the 21st century church has become feminized. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. no doubt. I mean, church can't take yeah. preaching. You're right. You're right. I've never seen such a, oh, such yeah. a, a, a anemic, weakened body of believers. Yeah. That, I mean, we've raised a generation that can't even ride a bicycle without a helmet. So, yeah. Somebody right. help me. Right. Right. Much less take preaching in truth. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, they get offended by every little thing. The Bible right. said, great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing right. shall offend them. Right. But I mean, you, you, it offends a crowd, man, yeah. Yeah. just to preach the word. Just, just, to, just to expound scripture line on line. They get, they get absolutely puffed up about that. All they want to hear is that edification. They got those itching ears. Scratch me right here. Itch. Nothing, nothing feels better to itch than to be scratched. I can come out of the hay field. My wife's got long enough nails to she can scratch my back but still make biscuits and not get a bunch of dirt in it. Somebody say amen. And, uh, and, and it'll scrap about three or four strokes down my back. I, I'm about ready to go down with that overhead fan going in that air condition. Somebody help me. 
it relaxes you. And a church today, just, just come scratch me. Yeah. Yeah. Come scratch my itching ears and make me, give me something to feel better. Right. We got a weakened church. Yes. It's become feminized. But really, the characteristics outside of our name, the bride. Don't get excited, but I said the bride. Yeah. Not the Baptist bride, yeah. but the bride. Yeah. Outside of our title, everything we do besides the reproduction process to bring forth, we're to be soul winners, we're to be evangelistic, we're to go and bring forth fruit, our fruit should remain. But stay with me, everything else about us is masculine. We're soldiers. We're athletic. We're, we're, we're in a race. Uh, we're, we're husbandmen. We're farmers. And, and we're, we're to do the work of God. It's, it's, it's a hard work. And in the text tonight, John identifies the church as an elect lady. And by the way, if God gives anything, any person, a proper noun or a descriptive noun, you can guarantee that that person, the subject of that title, meets every single characteristic and attribute or they wouldn't have the title. And a church ought to be like a lady. Amen. I'm going somewhere. Y'all just stay. Some of y'all looking like, where is he going? I've got two or three crowds. I've got a crowd in here wondering, I hope he'll hurry up so we can watch that game. <laughs> and then we got one crowd in here saying, I, just, I, I, don't, I didn't want to come anyway, and he's just loud. And a bunch, all he does is give a bunch of illustrations. I wished I'd go on them. And then there's somebody here saying, I want something. Amen. And for you, I'm trying to help you tonight. Yeah, Turn with me back to Proverbs mm -hmm. chapter 31. Church is likened in the Gospels as a lady. What page is that on, y'all? Ain't that in the Old Testament? I think it's in Proverbs. Ain't it in the Old Testament? Huh? It's somewhere in here. This new Bible ain't a stick all the time. Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 31, in verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? Yeah. Virtue are, are positive attributes. Mm -hmm. Virtue is good things. Yeah. Yeah. Virtue is not bad things. Everybody say virtue is good things. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Who can find a good woman? Yeah. Right. Now, I'd hate to be looking for a wife in this day and age. Yeah. Yeah. I've been blessed to be raised by a good mama. I yeah. talked to her today to the glory of God. She's, I guess, on her deathbed. But uh, we talked for 20 minutes, her mind was clear, and I glorify God for extending her days. Amen. But I was raised by a good, she, she honored her husband. She's a good woman. She kept food on the table. She's a good, she washed her clothes. I mean, she ironed sheets. Don't get nervous, women. But I mean, my mama worked. And, uh, and I thank God for my mama. My, my mama, that was my, my daddy's mama. Yeah. My mama Hudson. I thank God for my nanny Crawford. That was my mama's mama. I've been surrounded in my life and influenced by good women. I want to glorify God for the good women in the church. One of my early Sunday school teachers, Miss Juanita Stowers, she had polio. And she carried her legs. She had, to, she had to walk. Very, very, very struggle for her just to walk to church. But she'd come every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, every night of the revival. She was there. All, she taught me. I'm, I, can, I can hear her telling the story. Praise God about that prodigal son. And she'd tell him old stories. She said her daddy was sitting on the front porch and said he kept looking for that son to come home. And with her old southern drawl, she said one day, he said, look a yonder, praise God. I can hear her telling me that story. And I, as I preach, I oftentimes, in my, in my spiritual schizophrenia, somebody say amen, I, I can hear her talking to me, telling me those stories. And listen, thank God for good women. But the church is like a good woman. It says that, now don't y'all try to make this practical or every woman in here is going to have a hard time with this message. It, amen, some of that crowd hates that spiritualization. Right. Well, you're spiritualizing that. Well, if I start making it practical, there ain't a woman in here going to like any of this message. Because yeah. you don't meet up to these expectations. Yeah, right. Amen, we can't even sew a button on a shirt anymore. Yeah, right. yeah. We got so sorry in our homes in America that if a button falls off, you go to Walmart and buy another one. Yeah, right. Don't look down, ma'am, like you've lost something. Yeah. You can't even sew a button on a shirt. Yeah. 
Hey, Amen. You got you got to send breeches to get him. Bless God to the dry cleaners. I never seen anything like it. My 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 sisters grew up making dresses. They used to sell cloth. They had bolts of cloth that had patterns. Is everybody all right? People had sewing machines and sewing boxes. Hey, Amen. They used to cook. Nowadays, when you say supper time, kids run to the car. Somebody say amen. Yeah. It's preaching. T don't look yeah. down. Y'all going to tick me off, and I was feeling good. You're going to make me mad, and I'll preach mad. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Be ye therefore angry, the Bible said. I like that verse. Yeah. I, hey, church is like a good woman. We can't even find a good woman. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't find a good woman. Yeah. You go, you, I'll never forget, man got up, he was telling, it was, it was in a fellowship meeting in Kentucky, and he got up, and he said, me and my wife went on vacation, he named the place, and he said, we started looking for a church, and said, so we couldn't find one, and I thought, man, Proverbs 31, who can find her? Who can find? Brother's telling me about out west where he's wanting to go, uh, out there on the reservations. Uh, how that there's no, they drove an hour and a half, an Indian family, just to go to a Baptist church. I mean, they've been watching, they had been seven, eight years without a pastor. Yeah. Yeah, right. Who can find yeah. a good church? Yeah. Good church, hard to find, friend. Yeah. Right. A good woman's hard to find. Right. Right. Amen. Right. And a good church, my text tonight is that a good church is like a good woman, friend. And if you've got one, praise God, you better hold on to her. You better be glad you've got one. You better quit criticizing her all the time, running her down, not taking care of her. A good church, praise God, is like a good woman. Hey, who can find her? Where are you going to find her? Bible believing, soul winning, old time. Hey, man, where are you going to find a good church? Good church. Good church. I'll tell you, she's hard to find. Look at verse 10 said, and her price is far above rubies. Good, good church will cost you something. That's right. A good church is worth your investment. Yes, it is. I dated several girls before I married. I wish I could get my money back. Somebody say amen. But it cost me to date them. Amen. I'd always usually break up around Valentine's and Christmas. Somebody say amen. I tell I think we need to be dating around a little bit. Somebody help me. Y'all okay? Yeah. But a good church, when I found out what my wife-to-be wanted, yeah. I started getting it for her. Right. She didn't have to beg me for stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why I got a good woman. Because yeah. I value her. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, look up in here. Hey, I value her. Yeah. How much investment do you have in this That's woman? Good. Yeah. Oh yeah, you had to buy a ring unless you some cheap something. You took her out to good places like Crystal. So, somebody say amen at Hardy's. Somebody say amen. But wait, wait, you took her on dates and, and you spent some money on her. You made an investment in her because her value's above root. A good, good church is like a good woman. They're hard to find and they're worth something. They're worth something. What, what, are, you, what are you putting into the church? Most, most of the today's mentality is what can I get from the church? Amen. That's what they'll say. They recently a family united with our church, and they made this statement. Well, we're so glad we finally found a church for our family. And I, you know how tactful I am because I don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. And I, and she, it was a woman that said it. Yeah. And I and before I could help myself, I said, "Ma'am, that's not the way it is." Mm. I said, "It's not our church for your family. It's your family for our church." Yeah. This ain't some showcase to show off a bunch of fiddle players and guitar pickers. Amen. This ain't some kind of a show, some kind of a, bless God, uh, wannabes, amen, America Idol. Hey, friend. Hey, look up, neighbor. Hey, I'm talking about a good church. It's like a, she's worth something. She's worth your time. She's worth your treasures. She's worth your talents. She's worth your investment. She's above root. It's hard to put a price on a good church. Hey, man. Good church serves like a good woman. And my text tonight is a good church like a good woman. Y'all yeah. yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. Who can find her? Yeah. Where are they at? Yeah. Good, if you find her, you better, you better take care of her. Yeah, sure. Said this, her heart of her husband does safely trust in her. A good church can be trusted. Yeah, sir. You, know why good, you know why some churches never have anything? Yeah. 
because God can't trust them with anything. Amen. Now, signs of a good church, it, a good church attracts and a good church repels. I understand that. And you can build a crowd and not build a church. Are y'all still listening? Yeah. But I'll tell you why a lot of churches are not doing much. Because God can't trust them. What they're going to tell them when they get it. God sends a new convert in here. Hey, you better disciple that convert. And you better be careful who influences them. Because there's a bad crowd in here tonight. There's the wrong influence everywhere you go. I'm battling that right now as I'm standing here. I'm wondering what's going on at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church behind my back. Y'all okay? But praise God, I got some good sheep dogs at the house. Somebody say amen. And amen. And they're out for the wolf. Amen. And I'm saying to you, God bless your heart. A good church, it can be trusted. Good trust, good. Can he trust us with money? I know, I know churches all across western North Carolina and in mountains over there, and they got enough money to burn a mule a, a dollar at a time. I'm talking about 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 thousand dollars in the bank drawing interest on it. Running about 40 people, every one of them white headed. Don't get nervous. Look up, don't buy yet. I'm not ready to pray yet. And God's given them all that money, and, and missionaries need that money. And camps need to be built like Old Pass Baptist Camp in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Somebody okay? Hey, that needs to be funded and, and, and dormitories built. And hey, God's, God's trying to do something, but they're hoarding. Hey, God can't even trust them. Yeah, yeah right. You're exactly right. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah, yeah. Not our monthly bread, not our annual salary, yeah, yeah. not our decade of savings. Yeah, yeah. Hey, he said, give us this day. He wants us to be dependent. Yeah, and yeah. hey, good, God can trust it. He said that her husband can trust her. Good church like a good woman. He need, has no need to spoil. You don't need but one of them. You don't need but one of them. All this bunch of church hopping and swapping. Why don't you just lock in somewhere and stay somewhere? Don't need somebody else's. That spoil was, was the goods of others. That's what a spoil in victory they would take the spoil. That that was that was that was the that was the the reward of, of conquering. But a good church like a good woman, you don't need to conquer nothing else. Yeah, right. Yeah. You you get a good church, praise God, you won't have need of spoil. That's right. You ought to get in a good church, be faithful. Yes, yeah. Amen. Good church said she'll do him good, not evil. Verse 12. You know what a good church is? Good church will do you good. You all the time thinking, he's, he's, pretty, he's trying to hurt. Why is he picking on me? Why don't he let my daughter sing? Well, if you'd put some clothes on her. Yeah. Jerk him nose rings out of her nose. Somebody help me. He might, amen, he might could ask her. To, amen. Is y'all okay? They're trying to help. Amen. Hard preaching. Hey, a good church, friend, will do you good. Yeah. I, I have no complaints about the church. Yeah. All these people, I got hurt in a church. I got hurt in a church. What do you want, a T-shirt? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. What you want, some kind of badge? Well, I got hurt. Who hasn't been hurt in a church? Right. Right. Praise God, but I've got a whole lot more help than I've got hurt. Right. Praise God, I was on my way to hell. Yeah. I was lost and undone. I, I, God Street said I was condemned already because I not believed on the name of the only God and Son of God. Hey, I got more good than bad, praise God, from her. Hey, man, she'll do you good. She'll do you good. Good church, like good. she seeketh her wool and flax, and he worketh willingly. Good church's always busy. They're working. We got these three S Christians now just sit soaking sour. And they want, to raise, they want to raise up a bunch of questions at a business meeting, how you going to spend the money. Yeah. And ain't done the blessed fired thing. Yeah. Halfway show up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And then they won't try. No, they, they ought, you ought to be involved. You ought to find something to do. Right. Right. Everybody ought to be doing something around here. Right. Picking up cigarette butts behind the building. Is everybody ought to yeah. do something. Yeah. Oh, there's a, old Larry Brown down there in North Augusta, South Carolina before he died. He first got saved down at Tacoa Falls, Georgia at the old camp meeting there. And he got saved, he wanted to do something for God. And I mean, man, he was rough. I mean, he got saved, he was, he was a muscle car man. I mean, he smoked two or three packs of Marlboros a day. I mean, he, he was rough as a cob. And, and he got saved, man, and, and he went to the preacher and he said, preacher, I want to do something. Well, the preacher's thinking, what can, he, what can I do? He, he's, you know, he, he ain't really qualified yet. 
He, he said, he said, well, Larry, he said, let me think about it. He took him on soul winning and said, well, he got in the house and said, they're sitting in there on, in a soul winning visitation and Larry got to shaking, having a nicotine fit and the ashtray was there and he just fired one up. <laughs> and, and, and he's with the preacher. And, and they said, over there and he said, what is it? <laughs> he said, Lord, I can't take him on visitation yet. He ain't ready for that. Yeah. He, he come and said, preacher, you got me something to do? Listen what, he said, I'm going to put you on the, pool, on, on, the, on the steeple committee. And Larry said, oh, all right. And there wasn't no steeple. He made that up. <laughs> and he said, well, what am I supposed to do? He said, what you do, Larry, every time you come to church? He said, you walk around out there in the parking lot and look up at that steeple and make sure it's not leaning to one side. <laughs> and he said, you go over and make sure ain't no bird nest in the side of it. Ain't no bird's baby there. And said, you circle the building, go back to the back and pick a good stroke, make sure it's not tilted. And said, you come in and give me a sign if that thing's right. <laughs> Man, he was so excited he'd get there 30 minutes early. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You remember that? Yeah, go ahead. He'd get so excited yeah. about being on the on the on the That's steeple right. committee. That's right. Hey, he got on that hey man steeple committee. He'd get so excited. He got so excited he got there 30 minutes early. Yeah. He'd walk around out there looking at that. He'd come in, preacher, it's good. Yeah. You say, how'd it turn out? Well, he pastored the largest church in the state of South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Probably more people saved down there in, in his heyday when he was conservative, standing right. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Hey, what you doing around here? Yeah. That's good. That's good church needs your participation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's not we'll wait till Jesus comes. It will work till Jesus That's comes. Right. Amen. Amen. Good and my text tonight is a good church like a good woman. Yeah. Y'all to thank God for a good church. Y'all yeah. to praise God. She, she, she's like a merchant's ship. She bringeth her food from afar. You know what a good church, it'll bring you the best. Yes, it will. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know why your preacher brings in preachers from here and yonder? Because he wants you to hear what's helping him. That's right. That's right. And if it's helping him, it ought to help you. Exactly right. And a good church will bring you the best. They have to go all the way to Arkansas and get a Jim Chandler. Yeah, right. Amen. They have to go somewhere and bring in a preacher way over yonder. Yeah. Well, what, what they try? A good, good church like a good woman. That's right. Try to bring you the best. Right. They want you to have the best. Right. Uh, the Bible said she rises up while it is yet night. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what a good church does? She never sleeps. Y'all yeah. That's good. Yeah. still there? That's over there in verse number 15. Right. Middle Tennessee Baptist Church, we have a mission. I thank God for what he said. Our faith promise missions tonight's the last night. You know what? The, the sun never sets yes, right. on the work of Middle Tennessee Baptist thank Church. God. Because somewhere there's a missionary. Somewhere they're getting over in the Philippines tonight. Brother Edgar, no, no. In the Bible Baptist Church, they're getting funded. They're getting help. On the foreign soils, there's somebody in a jail cell somewhere tonight. Somebody in a prison ministry somewhere tonight uh, at Rock of Ages. Somewhere tonight, Gulf Coast. Uh, somewhere tonight where they're laboring uh, and they're being funded uh, and they're being financed uh, by a good woman. And the good woman's Middle Tennessee Baptist Church. Uh, hey, she's a good woman. She's working all the time. She don't go to sleep. Thank God for world mission. Good church like a good woman. When you need her, she's there. Yes, sir. My mom and them, I don't care what, that, I don't know where they got it from. It was, it was passed down. But it, somebody come in at 10 o'clock and she said, y'all hungry? Yeah. My mama had that about her. Yeah. And good women, some of you didn't have a mama, some of you didn't have, but you that, that had, you know I'm telling it right. Yeah. A good woman will say, are you hungry? And she's always got something for them. Yeah. My mama would put on a frying pan in the middle of the night, make egg sandwiches. She'd get up and she'd, 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 she wouldn't lay up in that bed like some fattening hog. Yeah. Come on. Like something lazy something. Yeah. Lazy as charn. Somebody help me. Yeah. Hey, she is a good woman. And a good church, friend, I'm telling you, she rises up in the nighttime and giveth meat to her household. A good church will feed you something. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. yeah. They won't just give you them little old milkshakes. That's right. Little sermonettes for a Christian that dressed like a major head driving that Corvette. Somebody say yeah. amen. Give them that meat. Yeah, yeah. Amen, brother. Good church like a good woman. She considereth the field and buyeth it. Good church spends a lot of money. Yes, sir. I never have understood people get mad. They tithe in about $10 a week. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're going to give the preacher a raise. Yeah. 
and everybody get nervous about it. I said, give, I thought, I, I might have felt a little stag right there. I said, give the preacher a raise. He's worthy of double honor. And I went to public school, double where I come from means twice as much. I don't know about you homeschoolers. Is everybody okay? But where I come from, double means twice as much. You go talk about raises and people go looking down like you lost quarters on the ground. Good church spends money. They invest in the field, the work. The field's a picture of the lost. Oh, yes, a good church like a good woman. Yeah. She girded her loins, verse 17, with strength. She strengthened her arms. My, my wife had two of our children back to back. My TC was supposed to be Troy Curtis, but she became Terry Christine because she wasn't a Troy Curtis. Because they told us that it's a boy, but <laughs> it wasn't. It was TC, Terry Christine. She's TC. We, he was supposed to be TC, but then he became Troy Curtis. I watched her carry around two. She, she could multitask with two of them. And I mean, she didn't have a pocket on her like a possum or a kangaroo. Somebody help me. I mean, she, she toted them. See, a good church is strong. I'm tired of these little anemic, what, potato string, backbone, apologetic churches. Won't take a stand on it. A church ought not, a sinner ought not have to come to this church three times to find out y'all against same-sex marriage. Don't have to come around here and find out y'all have got some biblical position. Right. But you, you go to church today, you don't know what they believe. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Amen. Good church is strong. Mm -hmm. You know, they exercise church discipline yeah. right. when, when people's out of line. That's don't right. look down. Look up. Right. look up. Look up. Look up. Look up. Coons up. Look up. Yeah. Hey, look up. Mm -hmm. Church is strong. What about That's these right. weak churches? You're right. Don't stand for anything, yeah. any kind, no qualifications for nobody. Right. Any, anything goes, look the other way. If they can't be a deacon, give them a title for something else. Somebody help me now. Make up your own offices. Don't look down like you lost. Don't look down like, don't look down like you lost something. Hey, they're weak. Weak. Hey, man, brother Tony. That's right. Say it again. They're weak. Who can find, who can find one that's strong? He can't find them. And they all want to dance around some kind of this, that, and the other and won't take a stand. Won't stand. They're strong in their arms. They're strong in their loins. They got guts. What the loins is is your guts, hoss. Man, we got churches in Middle Tennessee. They're taking in people shacking up. Taking in church members and they're shacking. Yeah. I'm talking about they taking in church members. What I meant to yeah. say, so everybody will understand it, they're shacking. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Living in sin. Yeah. Right. And they vote them in, right. receive them into the church. Right. There's something wrong with that. That's right. yeah. 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 There's something wrong with that. That's right. Good church like a good woman. Right. They don't look the other way. Yeah, amen. 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 Good church like a good woman. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. This hit me today. I went to Walmart, and I went over there to get me some T-shirts, Triple X, Hanes. I think I got Fruit of the Looms, White Crew Necks. I've got like 500 T-shirts. And it's not that my wife don't wash them, it's just I don't put enough in my bag when I go. Somebody say amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't even find rooms to put all my t-shirts in and drawers. Is everybody okay? Yeah. I went in there and I, I had flashbacks. Down on that, if you go in Walmart and, and on that side where the groceries is, about halfway down in the groceries, that condensed milk's over there. And it never, it, it's inevitable that at Christmas time and Thanksgiving, my wife will say, Daddy, you need to run down there and get me some Eagle Brand. Well, there's Eagle Brand. And then there's great value. Yeah. 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 And then there's Carnation. <laughs> and why does she wait till the day of Thanksgiving? 
in the night before and say, I need some of that Eagle brand. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy run down there and get you, and I went down there to get that Eagle brand, and there wasn't no Eagle brand. And I said, sir, my wife wants me to get about three cans of that Eagle brand. And he said, sir, so we don't, we've sold out. I said, no. <laughs> you don't understand. You, you, you're not, you're not, I'm not making myself clear. He said, we got great value. It's the same thing. I said, oh, 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 oh. I done been down this road. <laughs> and it ain't the same thing. It ain't the same thing. To me and you, it's the same thing. It looks the same thing. I've read both cans, and it says it's the same thing. But, but when I take that home, sir, hell's fixing to break loose. You don't understand. I got to have Eagle Brand. I don't need Carnation. And unto God, I don't need that great value. I said, sir, I know I don't work here, but can I go in the back? I, I, scan, I, scan, I scan my own groceries. Can I go look for my own? Man, I went in that back. I was walking through all that. I was going through big old, big old, big old stacks and stuff. Well, I was looking for Eagle Brand because I knew better. Because if you go back and you ain't got Eagle Brand, it's going to be a mess. You know why? Because a good woman knows real good stuff. That's right. A good woman knows good merchandise. Hey, and a good church like a good woman. They don't let anything just sing. Any old Tom, Dick, and Harry, bunch of long hairs come in there and sing. Amen, bunch of long hair, bunch of, bless God, women up there half dressed. Somebody say amen. amen. I ain't got enough clothes on to clean out a 10 gauge shotgun. Hey, a good church says, no, no, they're not saying we don't have that kind. Hey, man, hey, Brother Tony, that's good right there. At a good church, sir, it's like a good woman. Amen. 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 Man, my, she's so picky. You, we, you can't even wash clothes. I, I've only washed one time in my life. And I want to glorify God for that. Yeah. And you men that make up your bed, I need to talk to y'all. You're messing it up for the rest of us. Yeah. Don't make up your bed, sir. We're not at boot camp. Somebody yeah. say amen. <laughs> man, and, 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 and I washed one time and I put the wrong kind. Uh -oh. I mean, I put the wrong colors. I put the wrong yeah. kind of soap. Yeah. She said, you ought to know. I said, I don't know. Yeah. And I glorify God that I don't know. Somebody say amen. amen. But a good woman, a good woman knows, don't she? She knows, she knows what kind. She's told me one time, she said, don't get that, don't get that cheap old, uh, when you go down there, she want me to get this certain brand uh, dish of a, a laundry soap. And see, because that makes the youngins break out, that other. It looks the same, smells the same. You know, tied. Somebody help me. Yeah. No, don't you gotta have this. She had her own brand. They know the difference. Yeah. Yeah. A good church knows the difference between big logs and saplings. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. A good church knows the difference, friend. Hey, but, but they know the difference. Y'all help that baby, she's hung up there. That's a good woman right there. Helping her. Hey man. Got it? Are we good? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I pray right now you'd touch Nan. Help this baby to get that out of her throat and help her to be able to breathe. And we, we plead the blood of Jesus on this place and bless a hedge of protection around this place. Meet the need here. Help us now. In Jesus' name, help us. Amen. Are we doing any better? Amen. Everybody okay? Y'all keep listening. She's throwed up, so it's coming up. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't coming up, she wouldn't have thrown up. Somebody say amen. Good church like a good woman. Don't you let the devil steal this. I, that devil, I hate him. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ, and I resist you, devil, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I resist you, devil, and you're a defeated foe, and I resist you, devil, I resist you, devil. I resist you, devil, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the all-powerful name of Jesus Christ. Get, get out of here, devil, I pray in Jesus' name. Get, get out from here. 
Get out from here. Get out from here in Jesus' name. Get out from here and leave us alone. And a good church like a good woman. I tell you what a good woman is, she's hard to find. She's worth something. She knows big woods from brush. She'll spend some money at the right thing. She, she's not tight-wadded. She layeth her hands, verse 19, to the spindle. Now, now y'all got to get this. And her hands hold the distaff. Now, what this is is a picture y'all have seen them in antiques stores, their spinning wheel. And our forefathers used fiber like cotton. There's cotton grown around here. And they carded cotton and they would take wool. Uh, they would take cotton. They'd take wool. They'd take flax. Mm -hmm. and, and they would use those fibers and they would make threads. They would spin them into thread and then they would make cloth. Mm -hmm. Now understand what I'm talking about. Y'all still here? Yes. And a good woman is interested in detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're real picky. Mm -hmm. See, this woman was concerned about the thread. She wasn't concerned about the cloth, sir. Yeah. Because she had to be concerned about the thread. There wouldn't be no good cloth. Yeah. That's right. That's good. See, yeah. we've lost our interest in detail. Yeah. Well, you, that's what they say to us. The problem with you, y'all majoring on the minors. Mm, ahead, Let me sir. help you with something. They ain't in their minors. That's right. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. There is no minors. Right. See, she's interested in the threads that make up the cloth that make up the shirt. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That's not in there by accident. Yeah. That ain't up there to make up, fill up space. It's in there because we got a lot of churches that looks the other way about deep. They don't care how it gets done. Yeah, right, yeah. right, bro. Yeah. They don't care how it gets done. Right. Old sloppy churches. I hate going in a church yeah. look like it's a flea market. Yeah. I go in churches on the pulpit. It looks like you could bury something. They got every kind of thing. Got Bob wire and a wire stretcher and up, up, up on the pulpit. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. No, no attention to detail. Yeah. It don't matter how you do it. It does matter. It matters how you do it. Yes. My papa used to tell me when I couldn't do something, he'd say, you ain't holding your mouth right. Yeah. And I, I used to think he was real. I, and I'd watch him. He'd, and I'd say, how's he holding it? He'd be going to chaw the back or somebody say amen. <laughs> And he'd say, you ain't holding your mouth right, son. The church, church is real interested in detail. That's why they're picky. Why, do, why can't we? Don't worry about why. You don't have to ask your mammy why. Hey, the children don't go around asking mama why all the time. Hey, I, I, my, my mama would say, because I said so. You know why? You know why? Because the church said so. And before you ever got here, they was doing it this way. Before you ever got saved, our forefathers doing it that way. We're going to keep doing it the way they did it because that's the way they did it. Hey, man, and a good church is like a good woman. She gives interest in detail. Real interested in detail. She's concerned even about the threads that make up the shirt. We've lost that, haven't we? Anything goes... Amen. I ain't through preaching this. That devil's done ticked me off a little bit. She stretches forth her hand to the poor. My mama, when she'd cook, she'd always make, she always cooked more than enough. We grew up in a generation, and, and she'd cook, and, she, and I'd say, well, mama, you made enough for an army. She said, well, you know Tommy and them. Tommy and them, his daddy, his daddy got fired. And Tommy and them, I want you to take this down there to Tommy and them. And my friend Tommy, I'd go down there after supper and take plates down there. We'd take plates down there, that family. Because they was poor. Good church, good church cares about poor people. Yeah. Hey Amen. They stretch forth the hand of the poor. Jesus said, go tell John the Baptist when he got offended. Are you the one or should we look for another? He said, go tell him this right here. He said, the poor have been preaching gospel. That's right. I can't stand these churches, bunch of upper crust. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Bunch That's of upper. You go, I go in some of them, and I don't no more belong there than a yeah. pork shop at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> Amen. Right. Bunch of upper crust. You know what the upper crust is, don't you, ma'am? It's a bunch of crumbs on top. Yeah. yeah right. Amen. Yeah. And, and you go, Amen. they think they're snootier and better. That's right. That's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Good right. churches, they, they care about poor people. Everybody's welcome. She's not afraid of the snow for her household. You know why? Because she puts clothes on them. Yeah. Verse 21, guess what this means? Good church put clothes on you. That's right. That's exactly right. 
and she and what I meant to say was a good church put clothes on. That's right. What I meant to say was a good church put clothes on. And what I was trying to say is a good church put some clothes on. Right. Amen. A good church put clothes on. Yeah. And what I meant to say, because I want to clarify my position, is a good church will put clothes on you. Yeah. Amen. A good yeah. church will put yeah. clothes on you. Yeah. And a good church will put clothes on you. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. And a good church will put clothes on you. Yeah. She maketh her coverings of tapestry, and her co clothing is silk and purple. Now understand this. This, this was identification, yeah. the tapestry. Some of y'all have done needle work and cross stitching and things like that. That tapestry was identification. I grew up where women sewed. My, my sisters can make a dress look just like something come from Belks, but really better. But my mama, my mama could look, and she, she could look at a woman who made something, she, she'd say, well, I know who made that. And I'd say, how do you know she's the stitch? The way she made her stitches. That's right. That's right. She'd say, I know, I know who made that. Gene Bruce made that. Mm -hmm. I said, how do you know Gene Bruce? It ain't got no sign on it. Yeah. It didn't say made by Gene Bruce. <laughs> she said, I could tell by her stitching. Amen. You remember those days, ma'am? I know you're very young. You look young. But, but you might remember some of that. My mama could go in. We'd walk. She she could she'd see a dress somewhere and and say, "Oh, I know who made that. Yeah. I know who made that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eloise. Yeah. <laughs> Eloise Bonds made that." I'd say, "How do you know Eloise Bonds made that?" She'd say, "Can't you? I'm like, oh, can't I see? <laughs> Man, are you kidding me? She could tell. She could tell by the way it was put together. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? This church ought to have an yeah. identity." Yeah. When y'all leave out them doors, the world's yes, watching you. Yes, and a good church will put a mark on you. That's right. That's right. That's good. good church will put a mark on the way you speak. Yep. Yep. They'll identify with your speech, That's identify right. with your body language, yes, identify sir. with the way you dress, yep. the yep. way you look. A good church will leave That's a mark good. on you. Yes. Oh, yes, y'all are legalists. No, we're not. We're separatists. Yeah. That just shows how shallow you really are. That's right. You act like you know something about the Bible, you don't know a thing about the Bible. Right. Amen. Ahead, I've never added works to grace. Everybody said, you're a legalist. Does people have to, at our church, the women on the choir, they have dresses on yeah. in the choir. Yeah. Now, don't get mad. Y'all inv invited me to preach here. And if you think I'm changing it for y'all, you can hold your breath till you pass out. Because that ain't happening. The boy told me the other day, or said, so, so women have to wear dresses? I said, yeah. He said, you're a legalist. I said, do you let your wife go naked grocery shopping? He said, well, no. I said, well, you're a legalist. Because everybody's got a line somewhere. Everybody's got a line. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, friend. Oh, yes. Good church like a good woman. That's good preaching. I ain't heard much yeah, of uh, Is your pacemaker working? Yes, sir. Hey, I need a little help from you, sir. I thought we was on the same team. We're looking like we're, we're having a little difficulty here. I said, hey, man. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. church like a good woman. Yeah. They'll, they'll put a mark on you. You'll look different. You'll sound different. You'll think different. That tapestry was an identification. I ain't through preaching. Y'all okay? Y'all mind if I keep finish preaching this? I'm going to anyway. I'm going to preach into that ball game just to tick a few people off, praise God. Her husband's known. You know what good church, they talk about Jesus also. Good church talks about the, about the groom. They bragging on Jesus. They bragging on Jesus. Hey man, brother Tony, hallelujah. If I got to stay all week, I'm going to preach till I get through tonight. Amen. Hi, man, Brother Tony. Hallelujah. They brag on Jesus. Yeah. She maketh fine linen and selleth it. A good church has something other people want. And let me tell you something. People don't always express what they want, but their life reveals what they need. This church has something that Hamlet and Rockingham needs. Yeah, amen. First of all, that you have a Bible. Yeah, right. That's right. 
99% of the churches in this county ain't even got a Bible. We got something worth buying into. What we got's worth, it, 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 hey, praise God. And we ain't even trying to sell it. We'll give it away. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Sometimes a good woman, a good woman, goes through seasons where it's not always high. I've been around some moody women. I know y'all hadn't, because y'all's women are perfect here. I've noticed that. But you can look at ours crooked sometimes. And I mean, they'll sell up on you. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Oh, oh, okay. I feel the ground rumbling. I see the smoke coming out. It's fixed to be a volcanic ash flowing all over. Sometimes churches ain't shouting. You need to learn that. You live with a woman according to knowledge. The application is, so, well, I went over there. They wasn't shouting. Well, some, sometimes my wife ain't happy. Sometimes she got something on her. Right now she's putting big Christmas trees. That's major. I know that made you mad. You don't believe in it. Ho, ho, ho. Amen. <laughs> I am Santa Claus looking. Everything but the beard and I ain't getting one of them. Somebody say amen. Is everybody okay? Good church. They, they, they ain't always shouting. Right. Going, going, I went over there. It was dead over there. Well, they, but maybe somebody's getting some help from teaching. You got to have some depth to you. Right. Yeah. We, we ain't got no bottom anymore. Right. Yeah. We don't even know what we believe. Amen. They'll shout with anything. Have no we have no we have no ecclesiastical boundaries. We're ecumenical. Yeah. Most right. anybody just calls somebody shouted or picked a banjo. Bang like bang like that ain't that ain't that ain't my that ain't my code of fellowship. Yeah. Right, right, right. Hey Amen. That's not my bond of fellowship because somebody sang a song I liked. Yeah. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. You got to get some depth to you, and, and some, that's quiet. It gets real quiet when you go preaching doctrine. Yeah, you're yeah, right. And don't she'll rejoice in time to come. You preach enough truth, and one day to come in here, whoo, it'd be hallelujah. Yeah. I love it when my wife's happy. Yeah. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. A happy wife is a happy life. Somebody say amen. Hey, hey, hey. I like it when she's happy, but she ain't always happy. And church ain't going to be jumping benches all the time. I've learned a long time ago. You can't always tell by the honk of the horn how much gas is in the tank. Amen. And my text tonight is good church is like a good woman and I'm not through yet. I'm not through yet. Amen. She opened her mouth with wisdom. Wisdom. Good church will put some, you know what, it'll impart wisdom unto you. Understanding. Application of truth. Places wise. This is a good one right here, verse 27, y'all there? She looketh well to the ways of her household. This is, in other words, she's in your business. A good church that's none of your business. We got people that they'll be missing two Sundays. Well, we missed y'all. Where were you? If anybody tells you, oh, that's none of your business, they got a problem with the church. Right. Yeah, right. Because a good woman's like a good church, and everything about you is your mama's business. Yeah. I didn't know how my mama would know I'd come in from smoking. Me and Timbo Bonds, Eloise Bonds' son, that one I was telling about, it was a good seamstress. We'd get some of them. No, ca no filter camels or them lucky strikes or them yeah. palm malls. Yeah. And we'd get out there somewhere and smoke and, and, I'd, and I'd gargle it and eat a, eat a peppermint and I'd come in. Yeah. And mom would say, what y'all been doing? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. What do you mean? He's a deacon. I'm with a deacon's son. Yeah. What do you think we're doing? We're reading the Bible and praying. <laughs> She'd say, yeah, I, you mean, what you been doing? Mama, what do you mean? You come in. I, I, why is he always, he's, he's meddling. Yeah. Yeah. Why is he always preaching to me? Yeah. 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 Come on. 
Yeah. And it, and it, and his, it is, it, every bit of your yeah. life is her business. Yeah. You're accountable to this place. Yeah. My mama used to, uh, it said, what does that verse say? Where, where, read my verse to me. She does what? Look, look, Looketh to the what? She look away. You know what my mama used to tell me? I, I never understood. Son, are you going? Make sure. Where are you going? I'm going to the ball game. Well, make sure you got on clean drawers. <laughs> you might have an accident. My mother, you didn't know this, but my mother would say, make sure you got on clean. That's the craziest thing. She said, make sure you got your drawers is clean. What if you get in a wreck? I said, Mama, if I get in a wreck, it's going to be more than that on it. <laughs> Are you are y'all listening? Yeah. Am I the only one or has anybody ever had that said? Y'all think I made it. You know what that was, sir, with the blue jacket on? That's a good woman said that to you. She was concerned about your drawers. She was concerned about you having old clean drawers. Hey, she was concerned about your business. And a good church is concerned about your business. Why wasn't you here? What was who was you with? Where did you go? Well, I went to a revival. Who was preaching? Yeah. Yeah. Who did the singing over there? Yeah. Amen. Well, that, that, no, 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 no. She looketh well. Right. What does it say that she does? Yeah, what she do? She's looking. She's take. hey, my mom would say that. I never, I never understood all that. Now I do. Yeah. And more importantly, than your underwear, more importantly than te having your teeth brushed, more important than having your face covered. My mama used to say stuff like this. And, and, and she'd say, my mama said this, she'd say, make sure you wash behind your ears. Yeah. <laughs> right. Who ever heard that besides me? Yeah. You know why? Now keep them up. I want y'all to leave you young people ever heard that. Look around. This is, everybody else has heard it. Yeah. Everybody. So you, I'm going to tell you, because I had a mama. Look, this is yeah. true. Why in the world? Because she knew this, because she knew I was going to get in there and get in a hurry and not wash behind my ears yeah. and come out with filth all behind my ears. Yeah. Yeah. Did yours ever say, make sure you wash behind your ears? Yeah. You know why? Because she is a good woman. Yeah. And a good church, sir, a good church wants you to wash behind your ears. Yeah. And they'll ask you about it. A good church will ask you about it. Are you clean? Are you keeping yourself clean? What you watching on the internet? What you been watching on that TV? What you been watching on your cell phone? Have you washed behind your ears? Hey man, a good church is like a good woman. I'm starting to feel the Holy Ghost on this. I'm starting to feel the Holy Ghost on this, sir. Like a good woman. What she do? She does what? Read it loud. That's exactly what she does. Hey, man. Her children rise up. Three, four, Sunday, four Wednesday nights ago. A couple come in on Wednesday night and sit down right there where you were on that third bench in our middle stick section. And the boy looked familiar. And I said, uh, sir, we're glad to have you. And he said, I said, you look familiar to me. He said, oh, Brother Tony said, I rode the bus when I was nine years old. I got saved here. And he's in his 30s. And I said, well, I must have baptized you then. He said, oh, no, I hadn't been baptized. He said, that's why I'm back. 20-something years later, rode a bus. Don't everybody die on me. Hey, listen, I'll bring them in in a wheelbarrow if it keep them out of hell. Yeah. Rode a bus, and he said, and come back 20 seconds, and he said, I brought my wife tonight. We're, that's what he said. We're on a date night. It's our date night. His date night, God sent him to the church. Yeah. Well, that was on Wednesday night. Next Sunday, he met, they hung around at church. They started to leave. Well, here they come up there to the altar, and one deacon was left in the church, and I said, well, Brandon, when are you going to get baptized? He said, well, I said, when, whenever you're going to, I'll be next Sunday. His wife's name Britt. I said, Britt, what about your religious background? She said, I'm lost. I'm lost. She, she, she said, I, I need to be saved. Well, she's right there at the mourner's bench. I said, well, you're in a real good place for that. She got down there and got saved. 
Next Sunday, she's going to get baptized. Britt's going to be baptized. Brandon was going to get baptized. Two other converts just got saved. Brother Gene Gooch had been preaching two Sundays before. They got, they're going to get baptized. They, they, was waiting, getting, they was all ready to get baptized. They said, oh, and gave invitation. And when Britt came, she brought seven boys with her. She teaches school at Riverdale High School, English. She had six of them, was, or five of them was her students in the 10th grade. Boys, long-haired, old long-haired boys. Some of that uh, achy, break your heart looking <laughs> hair with that, with that uh, mullet. Yeah. Looked like they need to be wormed and dipped. Somebody say amen. Yeah. They're sitting over there. Yeah. And when I gave the invitation, I said, if you're prepared for baptism, come on back. Well, they, the bunch of people are going on back. They just get their robes on, get ready to get baptized. And so I said, and I gave the invitation to sinners. Well, here come all seven of them boys out. One of them was her son in the 10th grade named Grant. The other, I can't remember his name, he's in 8th grade. All seven of them come down to the altars and got saved. Y'all okay? Yeah. Now, I'm getting to my point. Man, I got her in there to be baptized, and I said, Grant, she didn't even know they was down there. I said, Grant, I said, and she knew that was her son. I said, Grant, about right where you are right now, last week, this, this time last week, your mama got saved. I said, what happened to you today, son? He said, Lord, save my soul. Oh, man, she starts shaking. I'm fixing to baptize. Yeah. I said, what about you, son? And she knew his voice. I can't think of his name right now. And he said, I said, what happened to you? He said, Lord, save my soul. Yeah. And there's five other. And I said, what happened to y'all, boys? And they all said, we all got saved. We Lord saved our soul. Yeah, amen. You know what? Old Brandon was sitting over there, that boy, nine years old. He's weeping. He said, oh, thank God. This was his words. He said, thank God the church was still here. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God when I came back, said the church was still here. Amen. Amen. Oh, the church was still here. He rise up and call her blessing. Oh, yes. And my text tonight, good church like a good woman. And I want to praise God for my earthly mother but more, more so yes, sir. for the church. Yes. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. There ain't nothing like the church. No, sir. Ain't no institution. No, no. See, the church is not an institution. She's an organism. Yeah. Right. Right. There ain't no Bible college. Ain't no Christian school. Mm -hmm. They're gonna ever going to line up to the church. Yeah. She excels them all. Yeah. Ain't nobody like, ain't nothing trumps the church. That's right. Hallelujah for the yeah. church. Amen. Glory to God for the church. Amen. Thank God for the, ain't nothing Amen. like the church. Amen. Everything I know about God I learned in church. Amen. I got saved in church. Amen. I got baptized in a church. Amen. I married, I met my wife at church. I got married in church. Amen. Amen. I answered the call to preach in church. Amen. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Don't get nervous. Yeah. I got baptized in the body by the Holy Ghost Amen. when I got saved, but I got filled with the Holy Ghost yeah. in church. Don't get nervous. Yeah. I didn't say one thing anti-scriptural. Hey, I'm talking about I got filled. I got it all at church. Church. Ain't nothing like the church. Favor and deceitful and beauty's in vain. That's all this new contemporary stuff. It's deceitful. Oh, y'all been at our church. <laughs> we had Tim Tebow come. And I just felt so free over there. I didn't feel under bondage. Bunch of 7-Eleven songs. Wow. Thou art awesome. Thou art awesome. I could have wrote that. <laughs> Thou art awesome. Thou art awesome, and thou art awesome. Why has he got to hurt to sing? They were talking about, and thou art awesome. Help me, neighbor. I wouldn't give you five cents for that junk. I wouldn't trade one red book song for a hundred of them other songs. I wouldn't trade, I wouldn't trade one red book song for a thousand of them other little old ditties. 
thousand of them. Yeah. Yeah, right. Amen. 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 They make it look good. Yeah. Yeah. They ain't got all that contemporary stuff. They ain't got no amazing grace. It ain't gonna, none of theirs will last like amazing yeah. grace. Amen. Ain't none of them going to last like number six. Amen. I've been singing number six. Listen, the first time I heard I want to know more, I kicked the slats out on my crib. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Everybody okay? And guess what? I'm still singing it. Yeah. Their little old songs come and go. Yeah, you're right. right. Little old, little old ditties, whatever they got. Help me now. Yeah. They ain't got but two chords to them. They don't have. They don't have but organized. It's not even organized. Just two two chords. Yeah. Silly something. Yeah. And don't y'all let that creep in with these banjos because yeah. I'm watching these groups, yeah. these these bluegrass yeah. groups. They go to they go to edging over on that. Yeah. They go to yeah. edging over on that, getting yeah. getting some of that. Help me. They go to edge and over on some of that. Get over there on it. Some of that bunch of junk. It ain't no, ain't got nothing to it. Yeah, right. You're right, preacher. Na 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 God ain't within a thousand miles that bunch of cabbage patch bunch of junk. Somebody help me. Help me. God ain't in that stuff. Don't y'all bring that in here and put a bandle into it and call it gospel. I had shrimp today. Shrimp love water. Somebody say amen. I ain't through. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her. Good church ain't got to brag on itself. Right now in this town, this church has a name. 20,000, 25,000 folks in, in Hamlet. Y'all already have an identity. They, they, that's that church over there. And you can fill in the blank. You mean that church over there? Yeah, that and over there. That's that church over there. Yep, that's the one. That's that church over there. They still, yeah, that's the one. They ain't got no words on the wall. Bouncing ball, bunch of junk. Help me. I, I, I feel like saying more because the game, the game ain't started yet. <laughs> Let me ask y'all something. Are you, are you thankful? We're near the end. Why don't y'all quit? quit? I, 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 my mama's out of state. And I'm going to be honest, I'd be with her right now. But my mama's spiritual enough to know that my mama told me, I told her, I said, Mama, if you need me to come down there, I'll come. Now, don't, don't take this. I'm not here for the money. Amen. I, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Right, right. The Lord's took care of me, amen. and he will take care of me. Yes, yeah, but now I'll take what you give me. Somebody say amen. Yeah. I'll talk bad about you if you don't do pretty good. Somebody, <laughs> somebody say, how do you know if you got a big enough love law if, if I come back the second time? Somebody say amen. Yeah. Y'all stay in here. But my mama's spiritual enough that I said, Mama, I'll, I'll come down there. And she said, Son, don't you do that. Don't, this is her words. She said, Don't you put that on me. That was my mama's Georgia talk. She said, Don't you put that on me. I don't want that on me. Why don't you get sold out to the church and quit, quit cheating on her? Quit cheating on her. Yeah. Quit two-timing her. Yeah. Quit embarrassing your mama. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Quit embarrassing your mama. That's good. There's a lot of things I could have done growing up I didn't. There's a lot of things I didn't do I did do I shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of things I didn't do because right. yeah. I didn't want to embarrass my family. That's good. Oh, yeah, right. oh. Why don't you get enough loyalty about this place? Yeah, amen. It don't matter what everybody, everybody, this time next year, be some of these people's blowed out of here. Yeah. 
They got crooked. He looked at the preacher. He didn't say nothing to me. Why don't you decide it ain't going to be me? I ain't going to embarrass my mama. Y'all be great. My mama's getting close to death. She may not make it. I mean, she sounded pretty good today, but she's on hospice, man. I mean, that's when it's about over. And, and, and my sisters think it won't be about, about a week. Are y'all listening to me? But the last thing I want to do is, is, is embarrass her. She's been good to me. Church has been good to every one of us. Let's stand together. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. What I'm asking you to do in this invitation tonight, my, my, my goal in this invitation is to get us once again to commit, re-up, by the grace of God, say, we're just going to stay in it. We, go, we thank God for the church. We thank God for her. We thank God for the church. Won't you get in here? How many got saved in a church? You raise your hand. You got saved. Won't you get in here and thank the Lord there was a place for you to get saved in? Just get in this altar say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's going to sing, you mind the Lord, don't quench him, don't grieve him. Thank God for the church. There's no other name so sweet as Jesus. Yeah, cared so much for me as to shed his precious blood to save me no one ever cared so much for me and there's Like Jesus, there's no friend so precious to me who would walk and carry the cross up to Calvary. No one ever cared so much for me. You need to come. Come on. When I see him face to face in glory, I will bow at his name. You need somebody to pray with you. They'll help you. Come on. And I'll thank him for the pain. God speaking to your heart, minding. He cares There's help. so much for me, and there's no one who cares like Jesus. There's no friend so precious to me. God wants to help you tonight. Let him. Who would walk and carry the cross? Up to Calvary, no one ever cared so much for me. Come on if you need to come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Come on. When I see him face to face, he in glory. God wants to help you. Let him help you. I will bow at his nail pierced feet. And I thank him for the pain he suffered. All because yes. he cared so much. Thank you, Lord. Like Jesus, there's no friend so precious to me who would walk and carry the cross up to Calvary. Yes, he did. Carry the cross up to Calvary. All because he cared so Thank you, much Lord. for me. Amen. Well, I appreciate that preaching tonight, don't you? Jesus Christ is the best thing that ever happened in my life. But if there's one single thing that God has used that you can stem all the things that God's blessed my life off of, it's been the church. Amen. The people of God, the preaching, the teaching, the Bible, the singing, the fellowship, every bit of it points right back to that source. Why well, my life would not be what it is today if it wasn't for the church. Now, I understand it's Jesus Christ saving my soul, but God used the church to guide and help my life. And apart from that, you know what direction it goes in. Well, I appreciate that preacher. Good preacher. Appreciate the Lord tonight. Appreciate the Lord all week. He's been good to us. And we still got two more nights unless the Lord comes back. And if he don't come back, I'm going to be at that place, the church, and get me some more help. Amen. Go another mile for Jesus Christ, amen. Well, let's pray, amen. Dismiss. You still got some things unclear in your heart. You don't have to leave here without getting it settled. Find some of these ladies, these men in here, take a Bible and pray with you, get some things settled, amen. You, that's what church is for, some help. You're supposed to leave different. Amen, taking heed to what God gave you, and God give us something good to help us. I don't care if you're saved or lost, amen. You've heard it tonight. God has the answer. Amen. All hearts clear. Invite somebody out tomorrow, Friday. Be praying. Keep praying. Keep being in your place. And watch the Lord bless. Brother Nolan, how about dismissed?